Welcome back to episode nine of the Rally Report podcast. With me here today is a rising star that's been on everyone's radars as of late. He's recently won his fourth tournament in a row, knocking out both the world number 29 and 11 on an absolute rampage, and now ranked 38 in the world, Mustafa El Serdi. Welcome. How are you, man? How are you doing? All good? Good, good. Wait, did I did I say your name yeah. correctly or did I butcher it? Mustafa. Mustafa El Serdi. Did I get that right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it's perfect. Um, so yeah, to start off. I hope I'm not catching you at a bad time with you know the black ball open happening. Have you been following along? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I follow it on like social media. I haven't been any day to watch it. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I just watched Asal against Gawad right now. Did you see the match yesterday against Yusuf Suleiman versus? Uh, yeah. What What are your thoughts? Yeah, on, watched, What are your thoughts on that? Because it's been on everyone's. <laughs> I mean, that's- <laughs> I mean, it's. I mean, Yusuf was quite smart with the ref. Yeah. To be honest, uh, he he knew how to use it. Uh, maybe it was a, bit, a little bit harsh, but I mean, Mustafa. I I don't I can I, I can say that, but just the way he acted, like at some points, or the way he played, the way the movement wasn't the best. So you know he got penalized for it, and I guess it's a different perspective for everyone. Yeah. Uh, I I think it's it's a little bit too hard, but you know, it's the PSA then. Yeah. Do you? I, I'm curious. Do you use your to your advantage against certain refs if you feel like the refs are giving it your way? Is that something that you players do as well? Like, I feel like sometimes the refs like would be mean to you because it's you, not because like that's gotcha. the way the ref. You know what I mean? Gotcha, gotcha. You um, think it's personal? And once the ref. Yeah, I guess yeah. person, and and once the ref gets you to his head, it just, I mean, at the end of the day, you have to know that you you cannot do anything to the ref. He's just the one who's gonna be able to do everything. So, yeah, going back to the uh, black ball open, who do you who do you got winning this? Because I mean, Asal just took out Gawad pretty easily. We got a couple more big yeah. quarterfinal matchups coming up. But do you have a winner, predicted winner for that tournament? Um, I would say it's uh, Ali Ali. For I guess Ali would, be, would, yeah. would, win, would win this one. Okay. Uh, if if uh, I mean he, he's now one love one love down against Greg Marsh. Oh wow! I mean I, I don't think he's gonna lose to Marsh to be honest. Yeah, I mean, I, mean I know I know I know, but I could uh, be eating my own words if, later if if he does lose. But yeah, but but the thing is, um, the thing is. I feel like Ali knows how to play with Mustafa. Yeah. Kinda. So if he pass Marsh, but I mean, I mean that the whole thing about Paul and the way Paul is playing now would just, you know, exciting and amazing yeah. in a way that it's, I mean, I feel like he's, he's a huge danger for Ali, you know? Gotcha. Gotcha. So uh, you would say be either, either to... Farag or Cole. Cole. Cole in the five. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. So, all right, I want to I want to mention this to the listeners because it's actually pretty fucking nuts how you've moved up the rankings as of late and even this past year. Yeah. So I just wanted to shed some statistics with everyone who's listening. So you've you have an eighty three point two percent winning ratio since joining the Pro Tour. Uh, you won eighty four of those matches, only lost seventeen. And at the end of twenty twenty, you were ranked uh, eighty three, and now you're up to thirty eight. And how, I just wanted to ask, how are you feel? Are you feeling on top of the world right now? Um, how are you feeling? I mean, I mean, for a bit, like, use it during the, the the pandemic, during the COVID. Yeah, I felt like I was, I was I was a bit too late, you know, in a way that I just feel like, you know, I see someone as Asal, Yusuf, Ibrahim, mm-hmm. Victor Kaya, all of these players just like flying through the rankings. And for a bit of a time, I couldn't play any tournament because I wasn't able to get to any platinum tournament. Right. Um, so for me, it just 5K or nothing. And there, was, there wasn't even a 5K. Need, so. Um, so I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm, a little, I'm a little bit late and I feel like I have to play, but there's nothing I can do, you know? Gotcha, um, gotcha. Were you taking it personally when you see all these other young guys moving up the ranks? So no, was- no, I mean, I mean, to be honest, it's something that I'm happy that I managed to do, which is I got it out of my head. Like, I mean, I know everyone has his own way and everyone is going to, if everyone went to the top, I mean, it's going to get it your own way. You're going to yeah. get it on your own way. Not 
not the same as everyone else, you know. It doesn't mean that uh, Mustafa just he they beat everyone that I'm 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 just gonna do the same and do beat everyone and just get to the platinum tournaments and win a couple of them. But it it doesn't work like that with everyone. So uh, the way he like someone as Mustafa, the way he took it was a fantastic way. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's a fantastic player. When you look at him, he's so so good. Yeah. Uh, but then I feel like um, I took it in a different way. I went to play. Since I mean, I I, I played like how how many tournaments? Like maybe nine, ten tournaments. You're, yeah, you've been playing tournaments in the last a whole lot of tournaments. Yeah, <laughs> I've, I've been playing a, a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And in the last like eleven to in the last six months, I would say I lost two matches. Yeah. So it's it's I feel like I got confident one by one, which made me which which led me to be like where I am now. Uh, I mean, so happy with the way I managed to get into you know get through this these players miguel yeah uh Zahid and there's max lee fungi yeah yeah Gus, there's a lot of players I've, I've had tough matches um i mean i'm happy with the way i managed to to pass them or to get through them because you know these are all like good good players right uh, and i feel like a match by a match you get more confident while playing these players so, so okay so, so, so yeah I, I do have a question about this because it's what four tournaments in a row that you've won. You haven't really lost any matches as of late in the past couple of months. But I'm curious, do you feel like your level has just risen? Something has changed in your game? Or as you've said a lot right now, is it more about the confidence? To be honest, I wouldn't say like for the last six months, I haven't had like a, like a two weeks of training, mm-hmm. proper two weeks of training. So I don't think there's a lot of have changed. Right. But I've understood myself more. I've understood my game more. I got more confident. I feel like I mean mentally mental wise I'm getting much better and I'm getting to see the players and I'm getting to getting used to the matches as well. So um I mean in the last three two I mean in the last two tournaments I had to be a bit too tough. They were like the toughest ones because I had Bit like I lost a bit of motivation at the end, you know. Right. I played so many matches. I yeah. felt like, ah, uh, fuck! I, I don't want to play like now. Like I, I was playing in a tournament in Norway, and I was talking to my coach and I was talking to Kareem Ali, my coach, and I, I'm, I was telling him like, "Fuck, dude, th- this, this is. I don't want to play. Like I don't yeah. want to be here. I just want to be home and like chill, because I'm tired, you know. And, yeah. Um, no. Can I match? <laughs> yeah, and he was like, yeah. I mean. You're there. You have to play. You don't have to to lose. You know, and and it's something. Once I get to court, I just focus on. Okay, I want to win. So let's just get the job done and then go home. You know. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so, well, let's so, yeah, let's talk was... about let's talk about that recent tournament, the CIB Egyptian Challenger. You've beaten both world number eleven Miguel and Zahid Salim, who's ranked twenty nine. But I think I, I think he's going through injury stuff. He should be a lot higher. Um, yeah, yeah. Talk us through like. Match prep beforehand, how you're feeling during, and how you're feeling after the tournament. To be honest, going to the tournament, I was excited. Yeah. Uh, I was excited to play. I was excited to see how I'm going to go through Miguel or how I'm going to be, you know, able to... Am I Am I going to be able to hold him? Am I going to be able to beat him or anything? So it was really interesting for me, and it was exciting for me to, to see this. Um, I've had a tough first round, actually. Yeah. Which is... My worst. I have always the worst first round. <laughs> uh, I had a tough first round, and then um, I went to play Miguel. And I mean, the first game we played, we played. I mean, the match was three one in eighty minutes. Yeah. So we played a huge long first game. Yeah. Uh, and and then I just felt like okay, I can get him. Um, and I wasn't, I, I, I doesn't, I don't, I, I don't really get like nervous or anything before matches. Oh, okay. Because I know, I mean, if you yeah. got nervous, yeah, if you got nervous, you're just gonna lose. You know, I, I don't feel like any nervous. I just feel like excited, or you know, I just try to get all the motivation I have inside me to through the match to to think about the match and you know, to try to yeah. put all the mindset. When you're going up against someone as Miguel, who's you know established in the tour, who's been top ten, top five, when you're playing a player like that, do you go into that match being like, "This is going to be a great opportunity," or do you go into that match being like, "I'm going to win. I I have what it takes to beat him," 
what what's the mentality going in there you can you can you can be okay i'm gonna win because if you, if you said okay i'm gonna win you're just putting so much pressure over mm. yourself you know got it, got but it. i felt like at the moment i was i was having what it takes to beat him yeah i was confident uh, I was playing good. I was the underdog. I wasn't pressured. Yeah. So he was the one who was having the pressure. So after the first game, I know that I know what was going through his head, you know. Yeah. Um, which which gave me a little bit extra of a push to okay yeah. now he is one lap down. He's pressured. He doesn't know what to do, and I'm just you know going through it. So um, so yeah, you can just be really like okay, I ha- I have I have everything to win because no matter what. Or who you are, you're gonna lose at the end, you know. Uh, so, yeah. so, so, yeah. I feel like it's a great opportunity. I have to use it, but not like, okay, this is. I'm, I have to win this, you know. This is so much pressure, man. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. So, no, another question I have because that tournament, I believe, was on traditional courts, right? What are you? What are your thoughts on the glass versus traditional? Do you, are you, do you get more excited about playing on traditional or glass? Huge, huge fan of glass court. You're a huge fan of glass court. Yeah. Okay. What do what do you, what do you um, think I, the difference is between them and how do you? I feel like in the glass court, I mean, normal courts and there's so much difference. Like there's not a like I can't find a court which is so similar to the other one. Like this mm. is impossible. Okay. But glass courts are, you know, they can be similar at some point. Yeah. Because they're, you know, uh, the glass is just like you have to be more accurate. You have your movement. And and it's a little bit fast. Yeah. So, and if you can't see up there, you won't be able to catch any volley. So, mm-hmm. uh, I'm a huge fan of the glass court, to be honest. All right. So, okay. So now, now with these wins, you're uh, moving up the ranks. And I saw that you're in platinum events now, starting 2022, the TOC. I saw that you're in the draw. Um, how, how are you feeling about now, as you said earlier, that you wanted to get into these platinum events and now that you're there? How are you feeling? And, how are you feeling about your chances against I mean, this draw? With I think you're drawn up against Kareem El Hamami, and if you win against Gregor Marsh, yeah, yeah, yeah. How are you Greg feeling about that? Yeah, and if you win, <laughs> yeah, fall, fall. <laughs> I mean, it's it's fun. Yeah, actually, actually, it's 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 exciting in a way. Um, I feel like okay, I have my chances now. I have what it takes to beat these people. Yeah, and I'm confident to beat them. Like. When you see like someone as Miguel, who is top ten now, next month is going to be a top ten player. Mm-hmm. Uh, as, again, uh, when when you beat him, okay, so you think, okay, you're close to those people, so there's not a big, big, big difference. You don't have to right. do a lot of work again. So um, I'm I'm really excited for that. Uh, I feel like I have a good draw, to be honest. <laughs> I mean, Hamam is a tough player, but I mean. You know, you gotta go go through these people. You know. Yeah, yeah, I get what you're saying. Yeah. Are you? I for the TOC early rounds, you play on traditional, right? Before you get on the uh, the show court. Yeah. So that'd be. I feel. I actually, I'm so excited to get to the show court. So <laughs> I would do a lot to get to play in there. Today. Yeah. No. Let's. Like, fingers crossed that you uh, get on that show court because it yeah. is beautiful. Have you ever been to New York? And- Never. So this is your first time? Never been to the States. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's my first time. Okay. Well, I'm glad that, you know, yeah. you're moving up the ranks. The U.S. Open, now TOC, maybe NetSuite as well, but that'd be uh, fantastic. Do you, do you feel pressure nowadays with how you're moving up the ranks? Because um, I'm sure as, as you're moving up as well, there are other players moving up who want to catch you as well. Do you feel the pressure during trainings, sessions, or, you know, obviously? To, to be honest, I won't say I'm the best. I'm the best training partner. Why not? Why not? Uh, what do you mean? You elaborate on that. <laughs> um, I mean, I feel like at the end of the day, it's just a training. You don't have to be like winning, you know? I mean, like if, if you saw me training, you would laugh. Um, uh-huh. I would lose to a 17 years old boy. Uh, but there's always like something I'm trying to do in the court. There's always something I'm trying to think about, uh, which if it didn't work that this day, I mean, I get pissed, but at the end of the day, it's just training, you know? Yeah, I, I, uh, I heard uh, Marwan El Shorbagi is very similar to that. He, apparently, he's very different in yeah, training. Yeah. There's a lot of Egyptians like, similar to that. Really? 
a lot. But yeah, there's a lot. Because, I mean, when you think about it, you're going to pressure yourself over a training. You're going to pressure yourself over a training session just because you didn't do well. You know, there's plenty of it. Yeah. You know? What matters is the match. And in the match, you have that extra push because you think, you know, you're playing for something, you know. But in the, in the session, what are you playing for? You just train. Is, is there a little bit about, like, I don't want to, I don't want to share my secrets, all my, all my, you know, secrets during the training session? Uh, is there a little bit of that as at well? At some point, yeah, yeah. with some people, with some people, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. With some people, yeah. I don't want to sh- show you how yeah, yeah. I'm going to beat you. You know, I'm going to, sh- I'm not going to show you the way. That's funny. I yeah, mean, at some point, yeah. Well, it's funny because, in squash, the top players all play against each other during training as well, and you see that because groups and we're of all people. Addition, like, when, right? Yeah, there's so many in here. <laughs> like you see, Ali playing with Tarek, and Marwan is playing with Abu. I yeah. could be playing with Yusuf. There's so many players. Like, um, but I don't think all of them think like that. But I think all of them have that part of like, okay, this is a training session. I don't care. You know, if I lost. Yeah, yeah. Like they're not going to go 100 miles per hour in every single training nah, session, right? No, 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 no way, no. Um, mm. Real quick, I wanted to ask you. You know, you earlier you were mentioning about you know your generation of players and who are moving up the ranks, but and you've also seen them go to college squash. Was that ever a thinking point on your part, or were you always set on I'm going to go professional right off the bat? Uh, yeah, I'm. I was. Yeah, I was always set to be to think of like I'm I'm gonna go professional. Maybe next year I would. I'm, I mean I don't know about next year because I'm thinking of moving to England and going to Bristol, UE Bristol. Oh wow! Um, uh, but I just felt like in a way like college squash, it's it's meant for the its own people, but not for me. Yeah. I, I don't know why. That's fair. Uh, That's fair. It's it's. I mean, the competition is in there. It's getting harder and harder every day. Right. Like I see it. Like some sometimes because I have friends in there now, and I follow it. So I follow them. I follow the teams. I yeah. follow who the B two and all of this stuff. And we talk about like the players and the teams and everything. One. But I mean, like I don't think it, it was me. I mean, I got a lot of offers, but I just say I'm I'm not like interested in yeah. it. Which is I feel like it's fine. You know? That's totally. Well. N- now that you mentioned uh, Bristol, I did have a question. I I saw that you're also a part of Barcelona Global Squash Cat. And this is this is my lucky place. That's your lucky place. Every time, every time I go to that place, I always win the tournament after. And last time I left this place, I didn't lose a match. Are are you, are you one of those people that <laughs> like must do everything in in routine, like superstitious about things like that? Superstitious about anything. Um. <laughs> Nothing compared to that. I'm just like, but there's like small things that I think about. Like before the matches, I always think about something. Yeah. That I have to wear everything with my right foot. This is the only thing that would be a superstition about. But that is a pretty big that's, thing. Man. That's the only thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have like to put my right arm first, my le- my my right leg first, my right wristband first. That's that's a pretty big thing. I don't know what you're talking about right now. That's a pretty big thing. <laughs> it's it's just something that it's in my mind that every time I feel like I'm doing this, um, I just like okay, I win the match. So it's, I mean, it's fun. It's been working but for you. I'm, right? I'm talking past, about uh, a couple. Of months. Yeah, it's been working. So yeah. let, let's hope. Let's hope it's like that. Uh, uh, but yeah, in in Barcelona, it's just so nice in there. People are nice. Well, uh, well, I asked I mean, you this because. That, Usually you see, you know, players from Egypt based in completely just in Egypt. But for you, it seems and you yeah. just mentioned that you're moving to England. You're attempting to move to England as well. Uh, is there some, why, why is that the case with you? Or why are you trying to like jump around places? Has that been better off? For you? I feel like, um, first of all, I, I don't like, uh, I get bored pretty quick. Yeah. Um, and I feel like it's too much pressure in here. Oh, the Egyptian At culture. At some points, too much yeah no it's just like too much pressure and too much drama at some points with squash and and like the culture in here uh i mean it's great for a lot of people and for me as well and it's working well for me but i feel like using something else would would add for me which is working on like which you know for the last three four months it just has been working on good oh shit okay 
Okay. What what made you decide Bristol? Is it because a lot of the top players are there? Yeah, I mean Marwan Marwan is a good friend of mine, like really, really good friend of mine. Yeah. Um Marwan, Yusuf Solomon, Yao, Shubak, Muhammad. Yeah. Um and top like, class Birmingham players. has Joel making Yeah. Yeah, I mean you, you have so many players and it helps the what I've I've I knew that it helps the player to be academically working on and while though the on the tour, you know, yeah, because life on tour is not easy at all, so right? You don't have too much time, but um, so yeah, it's it just I feel like it's a good opportunity, gotcha. At some point, well, let's go back to the uh, the issue that you kind of talked about with the pressures of Egyptian culture, Egyptian squash culture. Do you do you think it's a little bit problematic with how much pressure there goes into squash? So many pressure, yes, yeah. but. It, it depends if you if if you get yourself into that pressure, you'll be stuck forever. Mm-hmm. If you try to get out to get out of it and just think about what you're doing and what you want, then you could work on it. So uh, so yeah, I mean, it's something I feel in here. I feel like it's it's more tense, which is nice at some point. Yeah, because you you need you to, grow yeah. up and be tough. Right. Uh, but uh, but at some point, you know, just like my mind is gonna blow, you know. Uh, so so yeah, it's 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 crazy in here. Do you do you foresee yourself, um, say, five to seven years from now, right, when you're well in your prime and squash? Do you see yourself moving back to Egypt, or you see yourself bouncing around like in Europe and elsewhere as well? Uh, I would say I would see myself back in Egypt. Back in Egypt, yeah. Gotcha. All right, so I'm going to go into a couple questions that a lot of people have been asking me was is um just the day-to-day of your life as a professional squash player, um what you eat during the day, how you go about training and I know you're a very secretive person clearly because you don't uh you you hide yourself in training, but if you could give us a little bit of a run rundown on the day-to-day, that would be fantastic. My my day is 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 th- my days are different. Like I, I have no, literally no plan for every day, <laughs> but I plan every day the day before it. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. so most probably I have a fitness session with my coach, and it depends on the week. Yeah. Uh, if it's like a, if it's like a week that I have nothing after, or if it's a week that I have a tournament or I'm preparing for a tournament, uh, and I have a session with my coaches, either Kareem or uh, Muhammad Abbas. Mm-hmm. Uh, or if I'm not playing with those, I have a match with someone or I hit with someone. So it's all always two, maybe sometimes three sessions per day. Three sessions. Uh, Jesus. Yeah, like at some point when I feel like okay, I need to play a match day, uh, and I have a session with Kareem. So I have a fitness session session with Kareem in the morning, and then I just go home, have lunch. I'm not a big fan of naps, uh, okay. but then. I just go go to the, the other session, and most probably I would say I just go to see my friends. Um, do you control what you eat, or are you kind of not really big into controlling what you eat? I I take care of what I eat, but not a. I'm not like a, you know. Count your calories. Not like type in my mind, like yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I don't really count anything, but uh, mm. I mean. I have a good jeans as <laughs> my body, but but okay, then, we'll, uh, we'll see how long those jeans can last. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know this, 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 this is the word I hear every time. But uh, but yeah, I take care of what I eat. Like yeah. I'm not eating so many fast food. Uh, I am not taking. Uh, I'm not a big fan of any like proteins, glutamine, all of this stuff. I hate it. I don't like it. Oh, supplements? Uh, you don't. You don't. Do supplements? No, I don't like supplements at all. Okay, uh, I'm not a big fan of them, but uh, I just take care. I just eat good, good food. Yeah, with trying to be a bit of quality, but if there is no quality, so just good food is enough. You know? But not a fast food, not cheat you know, like junk food or all this stuff. Yeah, uh, I eat it while well, once per week, once a week. Yeah, but not every day. For sure. Wait, so do you also do gym sessions and? In- yeah you do a lot of or is it yeah okay um yeah i mean i'm i'm more into like i love 
man i love leg day what, <laughs> just, big and, yeah uh, um yeah i mean sun, like today was a leg day for me so i have saturdays sundays saturday and sunday are the toughest two days because it's leg day and been running so um I mean, I love like day. I I love to go to the gym. It just makes me feel so much power. Yeah. Uh, and makes me feel like I have, I'm I'm controlling my body in a way, you know, in the court. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, at some points I feel so heavy because I cannot move a muscle. But but then when 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 I'm going to the tournament, obviously my coach, not does like don't put that much of a weight yeah. while I'm doing everything. So I feel like okay, I'm I'm ready and. I'm not heavy, so. Are you are you big on it's, cardio it's training or not really on that one? Uh yeah, I do a lot of, not a lot of cardio. I do one or two days. Yeah. Uh, per week, so it's uh Sunday and maybe Wednesday. Uh, yeah. It, it's almost running in the track or bike. So yeah. It's, it's, Wait, it's I, have, I have a question. So earlier you said that. You don't really control the training. It's more so the night before you think you get everything together. Um, do you, so your week isn't really planned by your coach. Is it more so you have control over how your training is going to be? I hate to be controlled. Interesting. Okay. I hate to be told everything. Like, yeah, yeah. I don't have to text my coach and be like, okay, who am I playing tomorrow? Uh, I mean, I'm not five, you know, <laughs> I can, I can, I can text someone or, but th- this, th- that's what we do in here. Like, you go maybe on Tuesday, you text literally everyone in your contacts who play squash, and you check who's gonna <laughs> reply to play next week. Uh, <laughs> but no, like I text someone as Marwan, Abu, Ali, Tariq. Yeah. Um, I have two of my friends; they're pretty good squash players. Um, so I planify who am I playing with in this day. But not at what time? I don't know anything about the time. Gotcha. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, it's 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 uh, and the same with this like co- like feeding session with coaches. Yeah. Or like, you know, they just text me. Okay, Mo, tomorrow is like two p.m. Yeah. Be like, okay, I cannot be there at two p.m. or I can be two p.m. So if I cannot, we can change like manage it. But uh, if it's never planified, like I don't know, I ha- I don't have a schedule. Which is not professional at all. Like, I don't think that's a professional. But I'm trying to. But it's. I mean, you're still what, only 20. I mean, you got you got a long time ahead to figure all that. Out. Yeah, but uh, the the thing for me that I, I don't like to be planified. I don't like to be like controlled as well. Like, yeah. You, I don't like to to go. I can say to my coach Kareem. I can tell him like, okay, Kareem, can you planify my week? And he'll be doing it. But I just feel like I know my myself who I want to play with and who I don't want to play with. You know. That's so, pretty cool. so in a way, you, I mean, you do have your coaches, but at the end of the day, you are your own. You listen to your body, and you operate like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure. I mean, I, 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 I like to listen to myself a lot. Uh, sometimes what I feel just, you know, it's important. You know. Yeah. Uh, sometimes I have, I have a feeling of like, okay, I want to train a lot. Like I feel like. I want to train a lot. And at some points I feel like in in the middle of the week, I'd be like, I don't want to play today, you know? Yeah. Um, which to be honest, it helps. Like it really helps. It makes you feel like comfortable with you, with yourself and, and, and makes your body more comfortable, you know? Yeah. That's true. Um, gotcha. Wait, yeah. so a couple of days ago, you, you messaged me that you're, you're going through an injury right now. Um, is it a big injury? What's going on? <laughs> I mean, I've been two weeks not doing literally anything. Uh-huh. Um, I have like a small tear in my hamstring. Oh no! Did this happen uh, at the uh, tournament? At the yeah, recent tournament? yeah, it did. It did. Uh, yeah, uh, I was playing with Shihab Assam in in the semis, and I just stretched really hard. Yes. And yeah. I felt it in that match. And the, the night before the final, I was literally gonna cry. Yeah, of how much painful it was, um, and yeah, I mean, I was so lucky in the in the final, but um, because I wasn't literally moving, but he got injured too, so he retired. So <laughs> it's quite quite the final yeah, showdown I mean, with the both players injured. <laughs> yeah, I'm I literally I'm not moving. I'm yeah. just playing drop shots, drives, drop shot, drive, both lob, yeah, whatever 
I feel like I'm gonna make him move with it, or I'm gonna just like snatch the points, you know, you know, rub them, you know, and try to take <laughs> any point that I can, you know. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, he just got injured in the the fourth. He was two one up, and I was like four or five love up in the fourth. Yeah. And he got injured, so he retired. Oh, that sucks. And I was, well, I, mean, I guess in a way, yeah. I mean, it sucks, but it could have been bad on both of you guys' part if you guys fight it out in the fifth game could have ended up with bigger injuries after that. So yeah, that's true. So in a way that's, that's a blessing in disguise. Um, all right. So stop. I have a question for you that I think was of most interest to everyone. And I, this was a personal interest of mine as well. And I don't know how you think of this, but there have been a lot of comparisons being drawn to you and Mustafa Saul in terms of, you know, physical build and the strength that you guys both have the passion. And I'm sure you're no stranger to hearing that as well. Um, what are your thoughts on people yeah, I mean, making these comparisons? It's 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 fun at some point. Yeah. Uh, I don't compare myself to him, and I don't think he compare himself to me. Because mm -hmm. uh, comparison is just, as I told you, it's a pressure. Yeah. And you know, you you want to take as much amount of pressure from you. And play with no pressure. It's much, it's much better. Uh, but yeah, I know I know so many people compare or compare us. We played the world final together. Yeah, world junior final together. We were the same age age group. Um, I mean, I'm I'm catching up with him in the, the the tour right now. Not 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 really close. Not right now, but like I'm I'm trying to. So I feel like yeah, so many people are like comparing that, which is fun. Which is exciting as well to see like how this will go at the end. You know, maybe it will be like a huge rivalry, and you know, yeah, no, it'll I, be I, I, exciting. I, I think it's. I personally think this is interesting because I think you guys are a new wave of players in terms in terms of physical build. Yeah. We, the sport hasn't seen you know such big strong players in a long time. It's usually been like strong, like tall, lanky players. And I think you guys bring something new to the sport just in terms of physical build. And I think that's why there have been a lot of comparisons being drawn with similar age. But yeah, are you, are you welcoming these comparisons or when you hear it, you're like, ah, like I, I don't, people need to stop doing this. Cause I, I'm a different player. Than I'm totally fine with that. Like, yeah, I'm welcoming them. I just don't really focus on them. Like I don't go to sleep and think of like people comparing me to them. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just feel like, yeah, I'm I'm going through what I'm going through, yeah. And there's, you know, there's extra stuff coming the way, but you, you know, you're just gonna go through it. So. All right, wait, I have a question uh, then. What do you think is the biggest difference between the two of you? Yeah. Uh, I mean, dude, he's crazy, <laughs> crazy strong. Yeah, I I feel like I'm I'm stronger, but I would I would say I don't know, man. Maybe he's more smart on court. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say this. Gotcha. Uh, he he has he 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 knows, or maybe he's more experienced. I would say this. Right. He's more experienced on court with the top players than I would be. Gotcha. At the moment. Okay. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, it's pretty cool because, you know, everyone's been talking about this, especially with you rising up the rankings as well. And, you know, you coming on everyone's yeah. radars and they see, you know, someone like you and see how you play. Uh, I'm going to move on to the quick fire segment. I don't know if you're aware of this one, but I'm just going to ask you a bunch cool. of quick questions and you can answer it however you like. Yeah. Sound good. Yeah. So. First of all, it's going to be a couple squash related ones. What are your thoughts on best of three? Um, yeah, I, I would love to try that. I would love to try that. I would I would love to just go hard from the first point to the last point. Do you think the best of know, three favors good. power players like you more? Yeah. You, you're going to go for hundred the pace 100 miles per hour and <laughs> just two games, you know? Yeah. Max of three games. You don't have to go for five games. <laughs> um. Goggles and squash. So you must be. It was a huge, like it was the worst thing <laughs> about being a junior. I was so happy that I'm not wearing 
goals anymore. Yeah. Because I'm such a sweaty person. Mm-hmm. And most of the ref think that I'm tired, but I'm literally not tired. And I cannot wipe my, my glasses on my shirt because it's... It gets foggier. Yeah. 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 No, that was... I hate it, man. Um, practicing in groups or practicing alone? Uh, like you like so, or... you like soloing better, or you like training it with training partners? No training partner. Training partner better. Um, commentators for squash. They have some exciting stuff, but yeah, they're fine. Well, you don't seem pretty convinced mm-hmm. that you don't because now if you watch PSA, you can you know opt to not have the commentators on when watching. Oh. Yeah, I, I would I would listen to them because they say exciting stuff. They say funny stuff. Okay. Like, you know, Joey Barrington, he's he just like, he's fun. Like, yeah. he's funny, you know? Um, um, how about your thoughts on nicknames for PSA players? Uh, I, I was having that talk with Mazin Hishan. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. <laughs> we were talking about the names. I find Ali's name is really... It's a bit weird because you know it's it's weird. Yeah. But Tarek's name is is good. Muhammad's name is good. Uh, Ferris's name is good. Uh, I don't know about Asal. I don't know if he gave it himself to himself or the PSA gave it to him. But uh, but yeah, I, I think um, I think they're fun. But some of them doesn't really matter. Some of them are forced. You think? Yeah. Is there a nickname for you? You think? What, what would? I think now, but what do you think about that? I don't know. I, I I think it's. I personally think it's fine to just say the players' names, but I think a lot of times nowadays commentators are really trying to force a nickname on every single player that's coming up, and I don't think it's necessary. And I agree with you. I think some names are fantastic. What What nickname would you give me? Huh? I'd say something like uh, it's tough because I think I'd say something with a strength, but a lot of those are taken right now with other players. So I'd have to give it up for the yeah. commentators to figure that one out. But I'm sure they will once you know once you step on court. Fair enough. But okay. Fair enough. Um, what are your thoughts on coaching post career or coaching in general? I would do. Uh, I see myself just coaching one player. Oh, okay. Not too many. You know, like I would pick one player that I think maybe I would do that. Maybe I would not. But uh, I I think if I retired, I would just pick one player yeah. that I think is really good that I love as well, which I would just focus with him to to try to help him to get to the top. Okay. Okay. All right. Now some juicy ones. Most underrated player on tour right now. Right now. Like from this generation or old generation? This generation right now. Players who are playing. Player. Underrated. Abu Gore. Abu Gore. Okay. Um, how about most overrated player? You can say that. Oh, <laughs> okay. All right. Um, how about one player you dislike playing on tour? Uh, that you think doesn't go well with your game? My game. Someone yeah, who, I would say Tarek. Tarek's game? Okay. Yeah. It's tough. Gotcha. Okay. So moving on to some life related ones. Um, favorite place you visited through squash? Portugal. Portugal. It's an island called Madeira. Okay. It's amazing. Did you get to sightsee a lot there or not really? Yeah. See a lot. I went to the beach every day. Uh, <laughs> Living the life. It, it's all like the, the hotel is just on the beach, you know? Oh, wow. Like I open my room and I'm on the beach. Wow. Um, so yeah, it's, it's crazy. Favorite place you've ever been without squash. It doesn't have to be like from squash experience. Um, I would say Australia. Australia. Gotcha. Yeah. It was fun. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was really fun there. Uh, favorite, favorite food or favorite cuisine? Pizza. I just love pizza. <laughs> well, I'm <laughs> sure you'll be getting a lot if of that. I can eat at the New York TOC. Yeah. A lot of good pizza places here. So uh, I'll let you Yeah, know. I love that. Yeah. Um, are yeah. you a big coffee drinker or tea? Which one do you prefer? Coffee. Um, are you big on coffee? Do you start the day with coffee every day? 
Yeah, but some at some points, yeah. Got it. Yeah, like I would say three days a week, I'd start with a call. Um, biggest biggest fear. Snakes. Um, how about biggest pet peeve? Like, you know when you when people are eating with like sound. Yeah, when they're chewing loudly. It's like yeah. You know <laughs> this 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 pull my nerves. <laughs> um, tennis or squash? Tennis. I don't think I, I've done this with what like four four people now. I don't think a single person has picked squash over tennis. It's quite a uh, <laughs> interesting to hear. No, uh, I love tennis. Yeah, I mean, I, it seems that like everyone who who is on the professional circuit for squash only watches mm-hmm. tennis. Um, favorite movie? Yeah. Uh, favorite movie? There's a lot. I love Creed. Big action movie uh, guy. It's yeah, yeah. I'm I'm more to like, but this is not an action one. It's this more like, yeah. Uh, I get what you're saying. It's box yeah. It's like more like a drama and like sports one. That's true. That's uh, true. But yeah, I, I I love it to be honest. Um, do you have a favorite song? Go to song before matches. Thing related to pop smoke. <laughs> pop smoke's a good one. Um, what job or sport if it weren't for squash? Uh, boxer. I mean, yeah, I love checks, boxer. checks out with Creed as favorite movie. Yes. Um, do you yeah. do you incorporate boxing in in your squash training? Um, favorite non squash athlete? Darren Waldo, a big soccer fan. Yeah. Um, how about favorite squash athlete? Let's do both in general or current and current player. I would say I'm Shabana. At the moment, I would say favorite as I like the way he plays or favorite as I like him. However you want to define it. Different. However you want to define it. I mean, I love Marwan. Yeah. Uh, Shabagi. And I love Abu Garti. Well, that's interesting that you said both those things. I feel like those guys play very differently. Um, Marwan's more length-based stand. Yeah, he's so smart. Yeah, um, is he is your one of your closest friends on tour? Like the the opportunity to share with him and like travel with him, mm. but yeah, I mean he helped me a lot, and Abu as well. Yeah, he talked with me a lot. He 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 talks about the matches I played, how I'm I'm oh, supposed wow. to play it like that, uh, the way I change sometimes when we play, and he noticed something. Uh, it's 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 in. It's like it's exciting, and I, I like that he does that. To be honest, gotcha. It's cool. I'm gonna wrap it up there, folks. Um, I'm gonna let Mustafa go watch the black ball open now and not take up too much of his time. But uh, thank you for tuning in. Thank you, uh, Mustafa, for joining me. Whereas I actually enjoyed this so much, and yeah. hopefully, see you in the TUC. <laughs>